might start the morning right with a cup of vinyl tap. Nothing beats the refreshing taste of a hot warm mug of vinyl tap. Enjoy your podcast in liquid form today. Vinyl tap. Enjoy responsibly. Two, one. Vinyl tap. I'm Jason. I'm Jason. I'm Jason. And we just listened to Under the Cherry Blossom Forest in Full Bloom by Ningen Isu. I'm going to start with Biebs. Cool, I'm not going to say the album title because I can't. <laughs> I only wrote down half of it. But that was sick. That slapped. Cool. Slapped hard. Um, that's it. That's done. it. Episode it's, over. Yeah, done. Okay, see ya. Bye. Tim? It was right. Yeah, did you like that? I yeah, it's very hard to tell. And you were like... I liked many, many elements of it. Not all. Cool. Do you want me to, to begin? Go. Yeah, go yeah. for it. I, I, I really did not like the vocals for most of it. Really? Yeah. The tone? Yeah. Wow. The tone, the tuning. No, the tuning was the best bit, or lack of. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah. You can be out of tune and it can be fine, but that was not... No, that was good. That, that was, was soulful. Yeah, I liked it. It was not fine. <laughs> It would be. It would have been better if he was in tune. Thank you. How, how could he, like? Was it? Is it there's two vocalists. It is it was... both of them or one of them in particular? I don't know. Okay. Probably one of them. That was just like always flat. It was like okay, it can be fine, but this isn't. Because that's a style, right? Like singing, but not really. Sure, your singing can be not refined, like. Uh, Refined isn't exactly the word, but you know what I mean. It doesn't need to be auto-tuned. Like, sure, we don't need that. But I did not like the way that the vocals sounded because of the tuning. Because of the tuning in particular. Yeah, okay. I thought it was great. It reminded me of, um, I don't know, the punk shit that I listened to. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. A lot. Mm. But I'm getting the sense, though, that that's not the reason you don't like it because like when there's like punk stuff and it's all out of tune it's just yelling that's fine why i don't necessarily understand the difference between the two because to me they sounded like there's a lot of crossover sure so i the the punk that you that we would listen to Mm. that is out of tune there's so much energy in that those guys are just like releasing their souls from their lungs right hmm this wasn't that, as far as I'm concerned. Like a different genre? Like, well, like wasn't this it? was closer to, what, Sabbath. So yes, I should... definitely got a Japanese Aussie kind of vibe from yeah. this guy. Okay. Which is great. I loved it some of the time. Side note, they played with them in, I think, 2013 That's, at a festival. Oh, which really? Is cool, yeah. That's epic. Yeah. That's amazing. Good for yeah, them. Okay. Um, what was it? I think it was Sumo no Uta, the eighth track, where I was like, okay, this is working. This is really doing it for me. But earlier on, I just couldn't... Maybe it like, took time for me to adjust, but I just didn't vibe it. Fair enough. Um, no, I can't say I yeah, relate with that at all. That was awesome. Like okay. All of the, like, the vocals, just how it was tonally, and just I liked that it was out of tune. It probably would have felt a bit weird for me if it was like... A perfectly... Lot of, okay, a lot of the harmonies are in fifths yeah. and fourths. Yeah. And... Fifths out of tune break me. Yeah, I kind of like it. See, for me, it's the the perfect refinement of metal is typically what makes me deep, like tune out. So yeah, if it yeah. was like for me, if this was all perfectly in tune and like the vocals are like really tight and together or whatever, then it would have been a bit like, oh yeah, that's okay. But because it was a little rough around the edges, it was like, fuck yeah. It was amazing. All right. Um, and then also, it was just so many riffs slapped. Oh, all of them. I'll they agree with you amazing. there. Um, I will say I'm, I'm really sick of E minor after that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, melodically, those riffs were fucking epic. I loved, I loved basically everything that... There are lots of things in here that weren't metal, and I loved all of those things. I liked most of the metal things. Right. But do you know what I'm talking about? Not really. No? I'm going to hazard a guess at some of the acoustic guitar parts that were in that, there. That was the shit. The bloopy keyboards in the seventh track, that was sick. Um, 
like wasn't there a bit where it was like really funky? Uh, Probably. Like, yeah. Uh, if we're looking for a particular song, the funk was in. The sixth track I'm thinking, Somewhere. Tokyo yeah, Bondage. Tokyo Bondage, I think. There's some like blue shit. It's like it gets all funky. Like that. That's that was so cool. It sounded like RHCP. Like I, I, the the basses sounded like Flea in that song, to me. Potentially, I I need to listen to the line again. Yeah, sure. I don't remember. Yeah. That's cool. You'd be very quiet, Jason. I'm just excited to hear what you guys. You've have been to say letting about me it. talk. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> normally, normally you interrupt and you go. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I don't know what to say about it, really, or like without you asking me questions. I brought it to the table because I like it. So I don't think it's a surprise to you that I like this. Yeah. So you've <laughs> heard this album before, right? Yes. And when was this? This is 97? 91. 91. 91. Right. I don't really know anything about metal or like this. Is this like, um, I don't know, like consistent genre wise with the time? Like, is this kind of music and the early nineties? God, no. Uh, I mean, maybe in Japan, I can't speak because that's like where the band is from, but, uh, Metallica, this is around the time that Metallica was big and that was kind of the, um, sort of metal that was in the mainstream, I don't know, Metallica mainstream in the 90s, or is that a yes. bit later? Yeah. No, that, that's then. Yeah. I, I got a big Metallica vibe from the first song in particular, but from then on it started to go more um more backwards Classic in the history metal. of metal. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah okay. Um, just it's not so... Not that gallops weren't a thing, but Metallica is very gallopy <laughs> all the time, like high energy yeah. Yeah. and not as like slow and... Almost dirge-like. Yeah, Either this way. is very dirty. Yeah, and just they have the like, uh, where's a good example of it? Probably in Tokyo Bondage in the sixth track, where they had like the call and response thing happening between parts of the solo. It wasn't just here's a solo, yeah. and, yes. and like, and like yeah. they're doing yeah. rhythmic things that are stopping and starting, and it's not just let's go a hundred miles an hour all the time. Yeah, even though there were sections where they went, you know, mm. hundred miles an hour. It just wasn't like, okay, we're not going to do this the entire way through. That was, um, what the, I don't know how to say the fifth track's name. Yashigaiki. That'd be good. Which yeah. is also the single they released off the album before ah, it came out. Right. Gotcha. Super, super cool. Because, yeah. um, I mean, they start off with that, you know, James Bond kind of opening. Jazzy yeah, acoustic jazzy, guitar. Yeah. And then they're sort of, uh. They went into like a interlude with like a weird surf rock tone, yeah. and it was kind of really even bizarre. before that slow build. They added the slow, right. added things in gradually and like built up what they were doing, so it felt like it was going somewhere. They didn't just sit on the the jazz chords, yeah. and the vocals, and then go to like a surf rock thing. What they I like thought was really cool about the surf it. rock bit though is that they went back into like the beginning kind of riff, but then they had that yeah, surf yeah, yeah. rock line. In it, I now. love that. That was and great. it was like, oh, it's so fucking mm. cool. Taking some melodic or harmonic material and transplanting it into a new section. Yeah, yeah, dope shit. Yeah, really, really, really cool. And uh, I sort of like I was questioning originally, like the the tone that they were using, like, like really treble kind of, you know, whatever, lots of reverb. But then in the context of uh, that sort of opening section, you know, how they ended it, it sounded amazing. It was cool. I really, really liked that. Um, and they did that, I think, Thief Him as well. They yeah. had a lot of that. We're like back and forth between solos and transposing the... I think they had the des- that descending kind of main riff thing. Yeah. They transposed that in like oh, three, that four such a different cool lines. riff. Yeah. It was really cool how could they can just grab one riff, chuck it in like four different sections or whatever, and it works so well. I think, because this is a three-piece, um, I'm pretty sure that they're really, like, they're clearly really good musicians, mm. um, but uh, taking a musical idea and, like, expanding on it in as many different ways as they can, they're not, like, let's throw a bunch of new material in the song to progress it. It's, mm. like, what can we do with this same idea and keep right. it interesting? Yeah. Because 
oh, where's a good example of it? Maybe it was in the last song, but I don't think I wrote it down. But like, I just know that for me, it's like the same riff, but they kept developing on it, whether it be texturally or adding a counter melody in or doing something yeah. different with it to keep it interesting while it's still essentially the same riff. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which I think is really cool. Um, okay, so second song, we'll broadcast. What was the thing that I was thinking of? Because I think oh, I got right, right. So, well, what do you think it was? Well, okay. Originally, I had was it the uh, was it "Take a Chance on Me" by ABBA? Oh wow! <laughs> but you know, because they're like "Take a Chance, Take a Chance," thing, you know, right at the beginning of the song. Sure. But then, I actually don't know what the band is called, but you know, Apache. Do, 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 oh yeah, you showed us do, that do, once. Do, 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 yeah, do, yeah. Do, do, oh, that song that slaps, but we can't do, listen to do, because do, it's do. it's pretty racist. It's really bad, yeah. but it's got like the, the but it's riff so in cool. it. The riff in it's like dun, 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 and I was like that, and it's like I'm pretty sure it's the same chords and everything. Okay, what, what did, did you think? You? I didn't get that. That I I didn't know if that was what you were asking about. I thought that I'm you're asking about one specific resolution where it um fell from like an F major chord to the E, e they were sitting on for the song. And that reminded me of um, Wipeout. Wipeout? Like like surf rock shit. Yeah. Oh. But where they have that flat oh. two. Doom, 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 and um, the melody resolves to the third, the major third, even yeah, though that's it's right. like yeah. generally minor. That's what I was getting there. Right. So yeah, there's elements of all kinds of music in here. Um, in Yashigaiki, there's um, a section that I like... If that was on a Led Zeppelin album, it wouldn't have been out of place. It's so there's so much going on here. Um, you know what I'm talking about? I'm not sure yeah. which section you're talking about. Was it when they started strumming the acoustic guitar yeah. and said yes? Yeah, yeah. It's like oh wow, it, it sounds like um that bit in Stairway where um where you know that happens. They start strumming instead of the riff. Um, I think, and was, then that song that yeah. song was so cool, and it ended with a fade. Ah, you're not a fan. I, I was so distraught when they did that. I was like, no, this could have been so epic, but no, it faded. What's wrong with the fade? Yeah, that, like, there's nothing wrong with a fade, but there was something <laughs> wrong with that fade. It was no end the song, please. Oh, it's so cool, and yeah. it's the single too. Yeah. Ah. I know. It didn't stick out to me as like, what are you doing? There's a bit in that song where. I think the guitar is just like fucking going, and I heard some pinch harmonics, didn't I? Yeah, I think it happens in a few other again, places as well. Is it pinch harmonic? Which I know that you love pinch harmonics. I, I really do. It sounds so um, sick. Basically, when you're picking the note, mm. you use a bit of the guitar pick and the flesh of your thumb to make it a harmonic, but it's got like a squeal kind of sound to it, not just like a normal, because you can do it on notes that don't have natural harmonics. Like on the guitar, okay. it's not cool. like the. 12th Is that the one fret. that goes? Yeah, that's the one. That, like a squeal, a pick squeal. That's what they're called as well. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all over the place in hair metal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's the genre mostly associated mostly with them. For it. No. Yeah. No. Um, just metal in general. I yeah. Think. True. Stuff that's very like shreddy. Yeah. Yeah. That's not how you do it. You use your thumb. You sacrifice some of your thumb flesh. <laughs> not not even sacrifice. Gods. Lay it on the altar, and your guitar will produce. Like a- you also <laughs> have to do it along the like certain part of the um, like where you're picking as well. It's got to be the right distance from where the note is. Okay. Um, it's not just like hey, do it anywhere, and that makes yeah. it happen. Yeah, it's yeah, a really yeah. specific technique. Yeah, and it's not like a super versatile thing that you're oh, going to no. use all the time. <laughs> no. Unless you're in a genre where it's like pick squeal heavy. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying is that this album explores so many different avenues of metal. Because we've mentioned Metallica and Sabbath and Zeppelin and like that shit's from like Van Halen did that all the time. That kind of pick squeal stuff. Yeah. And I mentioned RHCP. I don't know I mean, if yeah. that stands, but. <laughs> there was a bit of like two handed tapping stuff in there as well. Yeah, shit. Uh, I think it was in Thief Him when the intensity upped and the. It wasn't a tempo shift, but like the drums changed. No, that was. It sick. did sound like a tempo no, it shift. No, it did a two against three. Two against oh, three. There you go. And that's. I made a note of that and was going to talk about that because I loved how they just used that kind of. Um, oh shit. What's a two against three called? 
Hemiola. Hemiola. When they use a Hemiola just to increase the intensity without having to increase the speed, without having to increase, like, yeah. the fills and the shit. So it, like, still had the same space for the guitar and bass to just slap on, but was so much more intense. I thought that was really, really, really cool. Yeah, I, it go. flew by too quick for me to pick up what it did, but I was like, oh, they didn't change tempo, but something yeah. happened. Yeah. Um... Also, I just wanted to point out the ooze in that song was so pretty. Like the uh, vocal ooze. I don't think the ooze stood out to me. To no, be no, not the ooze. Maybe the ooze, but the gray ooze, the gray ooze. <laughs> Get absorbed by some ooze. The green ooze. <laughs> Someone's got to clean up that ooze. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I can't. Oh no, the, the band's oozing. <laughs> I don't think it really stood out to me, unfortunately. Fair enough. That was just to you. Probably. Yep. Yep. I was too busy vibing to the riff. Fair enough. Uh, does anyone else have any like specific things that they want to point out? Oh, the fire of the heart. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah I'm going to cut you off. Cool. Because I just remembered looking at my notes. Um, in the middle of a solo, the on-off technique with, I'm pretty sure, the volume knob. Oh, like, yeah. To yeah, make yeah, it yeah. rhythmic without actually having to like rearticulate the But it was note. really... Really clean. quick and clean. So yeah, I mean, it might have been done in post production in the nineties. I don't know. Or if they had a pet, like it could be like a again a foot pedal though. You think it'd create he- some well, kind of hear, noise? Yeah. yeah, you'd hear it sort of. Or maybe they've got a. Um, There'd be an attack to the pedal. Yeah. Um, they could literally just have like an on off switch. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It was still a cool. It was really really. Wouldn't cool, you hear an cool attack effect. with that as well? Well, like probably it could be post because I know that in uh, Sunspot last song, I reckon they used some post to get the um, really big stop in the riff. Uh, what was it? Dun 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 dun. dun, 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 dun. Is it? And there's yeah, a yeah. stop. It in sounded there. like completely dead air. It was completely dead air, and I was trying to work out whether that would have been something they could do live or post, and the uh, hint was the drum reverb so you could hear like they were putting reverb on the snare and the bass drum but then when they did the hit on the snare it was completely dead there you go so I reckon I'd be willing to put money on that That it's a post well if you want to take that action uh, <laughs> leave a comment and <laughs> <laughs> no? I don't know I, 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 it sounds yeah, right <laughs> I'd be willing to believe it I don't but know I enough to, to disagree yeah. you're not going to put money on it though? No. You no. should. You should no, have faith. We agree in me. with you. You should have faith. You should support me financially. <laughs> this, that. I do. <laughs> a lot of six nine chords across this album. You know, this that. I did not notice no, that. No, I didn't. It's all over the place. Yeah. It's like a really jazzy chord that they throw in all the time. There you go. That's my story. That's Hypothesis. your story. There you go. And there's another jazzy chord. chord. Japan. Mm. <laughs> hand in hand. There you go. Sure. Uh, hand in Japan. <laughs> you need to stop There's also uh, I know that you <laughs> wanted to ask about Maria on the thyroid <laughs> yeah. which is the name of a song <laughs> unless the translation's way off but... uh, good old Maria on the thyroid um, this is uh, when you asked earlier is there anything that somebody wants to specifically talk about <laughs> and then you and then you cut you off yeah. cut me off and then brought up what I wanted to talk about so thanks you're welcome how dare you full circle the Beatles uh, so we've done metal. Now we're into the Beatles part of the album. Uh, right true, at the end. True. Uh, sitar or guitar effect. How do you get that classic Beatles in their Indian phase sound? I don't know what the Beatles did. I'm sure there's plenty of videos on YouTube explaining what they did. Uh, That's a bad answer. <laughs> I know that there <laughs> Take are... Take a, a few random different... guess. <laughs> so there's, there's a few different ways that I know of that... I could, would not be able to tell you which one just from listening and mm. without looking into it. Obviously, use a sitar ah, <laughs> is the ah, most straightforward ah. one. Uh, you can use like post effects, I think. Um, you can use a but pedal. Like, what sort of a, what pedals would do that? No, I there are pedals that any... are like sitar specific sort of pedals for a sitar sound, as far as I'm aware. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, and do you look at that, folks? Then you've got, oh, what were the other, there was two other ones I had when you asked this before. One of them is an electric sitar, which isn't a sitar that's electrified. 
it's a guitar, like an electric guitar with sympathetic strings so that it sounds like a sitar. Like a mandolin? No. What do you mean sympathetic strings? Well, that's the sound of a sitar is it's got sympathetic strings. So when you play a string, other strings ring with it because of the vibration of the first string. Yeah. So you would get a regular guitar and tune all the strings or you would add like an extra 15 strings and make a sitar. I'll show you a photo. We'll flash it up on the screen. (laughs) It's basically a six string guitar, but then there's like sympathetic strings like up above it and it's still plugged in. It's tuned the same as a guitar. So you feel like you're playing an instrument, you know, but it's coming out with the sound of a sitar. Right. So we're going to flash that image up in three, two, one. It's been up for 20 seconds. (laughs) That's what it looks like. (laughs) Wow. So you reckon that's what they did? I mean, it probably makes sense. And from my very limited understanding, most sitar sounds in like Western music are that because it means people don't have to learn another instrument. (laughs) It's accessible and it can just be plugged into like the equipment they already have. Is Japan Western music? Metal is. I stand corrected. (laughs) Uh, So it's probably that, but I wouldn't be willing to put money on it because I don't know enough about that song to, as they, like, if they used a sitar or not. Fair enough. Um, And there's probably a few other ways that I don't know about that other people know about as to how to get a sitar sound. Yeah, okay. Going back to your original question, was there something of note? (laughs) Yes, there was. <laughs> the guitar and the bass doubled the riff all the time. <gasps> and then they would split apart and then they would double again. And that was so fucking lit. That was really, really cool. Because, like, well, I haven't really listened to a lot of metal. So I can't tell if that's like a really Sabbath. common thing. But it's super um, Sabbath and I really like it's hearing super it. super original metal where you've got, uh, is it basically het- heterophony? Or is it because they're doing exactly it's the unison. same thing? It's unison. Yeah. Um, Zeppelin did it a bit. Zeppelin did it a they bit, it but a bit. not as much as like Sabbath did it a lot. Yeah, they did because a lot. Because yeah. they they even had like think of Iron Man. You've got the bass guitar yeah. and the vocals. Yeah, that's doing... a like whole band in unison. Yeah. And uh, the war pigs. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. It just gives it such a big sound. Like, it would be amazing to see these guys live. I would like, love to see these guys. Like, yeah, sounds because awesome. just like having those, just those two lines in unison, the drums are supporting it as well. Just everything just coming at you, big wall of sound. They also sort of dress up from what I've read. I can't remember exactly. They dress what, up how? Uh, I think one of them has like the sumo underwear on. And oh my God. Really? Like face, face painted from like a Japanese historical figure or like character cool i can't remember exactly what it is but i know that they like have an aesthetic on stage as well they're really prolific right yeah they've got 21 studio albums oh my god oh yeah they're just a couple right just a couple um and you were saying that they've released one basically every year like even up to like 2020 well, they their first album was like 1990, 1991. Okay. So... Basically. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Least, yeah. I mean, we're, what, 30 years down the line, so yeah. they've missed nine years, if you look at it that way. <laughs> Step up your game. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Any... I, I think it was pretty tonally consistent yeah. as like an album as well. I don't think anything was too out of place. I don't think the song order would have really changed too much. I liked that their single was in the middle because it was a standout on the album because of the acoustic guitar and the way that the song started. Yeah. And I think that really mm-hmm. kind of made the middle of the album more memorable than you get with a lot of other albums. I don't know how True. I felt about it ending by going back into yeah. the metal. Yeah, Maria on the Fire Road was such a departure. Yeah. It was. It felt like that would be a good point to end on, rather yeah. than like, oh, and they're going returned. back now. Yeah. It's kind of like a weird question mark at the end of the album. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah. Next week on Vinyl Tap, we'll be going over the theme for this month. Did you guess what it was? Click above to find out what else we've spoken about in this theme. 
click below to support the artists that we just listened to. And make sure to tune in next week for more Vinyl Tap. <laughs>